In this video, I will show you how to create this bass sound in Serum Synth, and how to mix it with a kick. It's easy, just watch this video. This video is divided into two parts. The first part covers the creation and design of a bass sound in Serum. The second part covers the mixing of the bass sound with the kick. Please watch until the end of the video for more information. To create this sound, we first select the Sawtooth Wavetable for Oscillator 1. This will give us a bright aggressive sound that is perfect for bass. We then set the octave to minus 1 to bring the sound down into the bass range. Finally, we set unison to 1. This will create a single monophonic voice. This is important for bass sounds as we want a solid powerful sound. In the oscillator 2 section, we choose the allophones wave shape. This wavetable adds a cool texture to the sound we are trying to create. We set the octave to minus 2 and the unison to 1. In the first envelope section which controls the amplitude of the sound, we set the parameters so that the bass sound does not decrease over time and is heard at the same loudness in different stretches. We only consider the attack section to be about the size of a kick sound because we don't want to interfere with the kick sound in the low frequencies. In the filter section, I use the MG Low 18 filter to cut out the high frequencies with a 18 decibels octave slope. To control the amount of influence of the MG Low 18 cutoff filter, I use envelope number 2. I set it to a high rate so that the filter will respond quickly to changes in the input signal. In the warp section of Serum, you can change the shape of the waveform. By using the sync option, you can create a sound that pitches up as the warp amount increases. With LFO we control the warp knob so that when a note is played the sound warps from a high frequency to the root note. This makes the bass sound we create more active and creates an exciting combination with the kick sound. The first effect we'll add to the sound is distortion. We'll use LFO number 1 to control the amount of drive so that the effect has no impact at the beginning of the sound and increases in magnitude as the sound continues making the sound more aggressive. For this sound, we don't need the high frequencies, so we'll remove them with an EQ. The last effect we'll add to the sound is a compressor. I want the output of the sound from the synth to be consistent in terms of loudness. This will give us more freedom and control over the sound and dynamics of the music in the mixing stage. Now that we have created the bass sound in Serum, we need to do some work to combine it with the kick. As you can hear, this kick is very long in terms of decay. This kick is going to be combined with a synth bass sound. In order to avoid interference with the low frequencies of the bass, we need to shorten the kick so that only the main part and punch of the kick remain. I've written the bass line to coincide with the kick. This is because for this type of music, it is important that the kick and bass are played together. We just need to find the right duration for the bass notes.
Bass and kick drums often share a lot of frequency overlap in the low end. This can lead to frequency masking and unwanted resonances. To avoid this, we can use sidechain compression. I'll be using Trackspacer, a lightweight plugin, but you can also use the built-in tools in your DAW. It is not necessary to sidechain the entire bass sound. In some cases, it may be better to only sidechain the low frequencies where the kick and bass overlap. This can be done using a track spacer or multiband compressor. That's it for now. I hope you learned something new. Let's go ahead and listen to the music I made with this sound, but before that if you have any questions or feedback please let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos.